I'm Rick. Sometimes there can be an RF issue in a cable plant that's affecting more than one subscriber. For example, there might be a segment of cable with a squirrel chew, and as it gets worse over time, and it will get worse, microreflections will start to impact the quality of the signal. Depending on where that problem is, it can affect multiple homes. DOCSIS preequization can compensate for microreflections up to a point, and a DOCSIS PNM tool can analyze and correlate that pre-EQ data to show you which homes are affected by the same impairment. And it can also give you a good idea of where to start looking for the source of that problem. Prequization Analyzer is eCorum's DOCSIS PNM application. I'm going to give you a quick demo right now of our correlation group feature that shows you when more than one home is being affected by the same issue. OK, so I'm logged into Prequization Analyzer, which is our DOCSIS PNM tool, and I'm looking at the main dashboard. I can scroll down to the bottom here, and I've got a correlation group panel. If I had more than one CMTS, I could select that, but I've just got this one C4, so that's what I'm looking at. And right here, I've got no match that I'm not interested in, but I've got a correlation group identified, correlation group A. And I'm going to click that, and that will drill me into the detail view for this particular node, where this correlation group is. And then I can set, select signature, signature tab, to view that same correlation group. So I've got the same list here. I'll click that. And here immediately I see I've got a very strong correlation on these, it looks like six modems on this street. So you can see the in-channel frequency response is very similar in these six modems. I can click here to get a view of all the modems together. And again, you can see the frequency response right here. And I can look at the digital taps, the way that the taps are being adjusted to compensate for any impairments. And I can see that they are very similar. Looks like I've got the same ones pretty much elevated. Uh, I'll drill into those individually here in a second. And I can look here and I see that I've got a VTDR of 648 feet, 643, 651, so very similar distance for these particular modems. Let's X out of that and let's look at individual modems. So let's try this one that's at the end of the line here. I'll look at this particular one and again I've, I've got three frequencies and I can see my correlation right here in 30.6 megahertz. I'll scroll down and I can isolate that one, and I can see what it looks like, and it's way, it's all over the place. It's way out of spec right here. Normally you'd want it within these green bars right here, uh, but in this case it's way outside of that. And over here, this is very important information. I can look at my digital tap response, and I can see that I've got taps 10, 11, 12, and 13 are all ele elevated. The further to the right you get of this main tap 8, then the further the distance, basically, of your echo cavity out here. In this case, tap 9 generally indicates an in-home problem, and it's not above the threshold. It's close, but it's not above it. And I can see down here I've got a VTDR of 653 feet for this particular modem. I'll close that, and we'll try the one on the other end, closest to the street. And again, uh, frequency 30.6 megahertz. There's my correlation group, and I'll isolate that. And you can see it looks very similar, almost the same as, really pretty much the same as the last one. And the same thing here, my digital tap response looks pretty much the same. Looks like maybe tap 13 is slightly below the threshold on this one, but everything else looks very similar. It's showing me a VTDR of 647 feet. So I can drill out now a little bit on this map. And what I see here is that I've got my first bad modem, so to speak, the first modem in the correlation group. Then I've got my first good modems. Uh, I say good meaning that they're not in the correlation group. They might not be good modems. They could be red for a different reason, but in this case uh, we don't know yet. So I'll go ahead and double click this one. And this particular modem, again the same frequency, just one frequency on this one, but it's the same one we were just looking at. And it's a very clean modem. It's got it's right within this green uh, threshold here, so it's no problem at all. And you can see the same thing here. We've got no digital taps that are above the threshold line. So that modem looks great. I'll try this one on the other side. This one's got three, three frequencies that it's been on, 30.6. There's no correlation on that. Um, you can see if I look here, it's not that bad. It's in the yellow a little bit, but there's nothing elevated above the, the threshold line in this particular case. So we've got no issues there. So um, what this tells me is that the CMTS is telling these six modems to adjust their equalizers in the same way in order to compensate for an impairment, which means that they are almost certainly being impacted by the same impairment. 
if I click the satellite view, it gives me a, a good idea of maybe distances. So actually go the other way. So if I look at this, yeah, somewhere between um, this first bad modem and these two modems that are not in the correlation, there's a 650 foot span of cable uh, where there's a micro reflection bouncing back and forth. So there's an echo cavity of that distance. So by knowing where my first correlated modem is and my first non-correlated modem, and I don't know which way things are going here, but uh, if you have your plant map, you know where your actives and your passives are and your cable is and the direction that everything's going. Um, by knowing that information, I can then have a really good idea of where to start looking for the problem. So I can start looking at maybe some um, actives on the plant and look for maybe starting from there and then maybe where there might be an issue in the cable, maybe a bend in the cable or a squirrel chew or something like that. It gives me a good idea of the distance of that echo cavity and where to start looking for it. And the beauty of that is that right now, these particular six customers or so may not be experiencing a problem because pre-equalization is compensating for it. So right now, everything looks fine to them because the CMTS is able to tell the cable modem how to compensate for that. But at some point, if, that's a, if it's a crack in a cable or it's a corroded connector or a seizure screw or something like that, a loose connector, it's just going to get worse, and eventually pre-EQ will not be able to compensate for that. So suddenly I will have to go uh, do a truck roll because I've got multiple customers that are offline or impacted. Right now, with nobody being impacted, I can proactively schedule a truck to come out here at some point, look for that particular impairment, fix it, and then check and make sure that the correlation group has cleared up. So I'm avoiding a future outage and a future unplanned truck roll. That's the beauty of pre equalization analyzer and correlation groups. As you can see, pre equalization analyzer allows your maintenance and repair organization to be more proactive rather than the usual reactive break fix model where there's already a noticeable impact to the customer service. That will save you a ton of money on unplanned truck rolls, not to mention the improvement in the quality of your cable plant and the resulting increase that will mean in customer satisfaction. Want to learn more? Give us a call at 800-909-9441 or go to preequalizationanalyzer.com.